broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey there, everyone. Good evening. I'm delighted to see you all here. Lots of names that I recognize and a lot of new ones, too, which is always exciting. Um, first, let me welcome anyone who is new to my Psychic Hour. I do this every month, and we always seem to have a ton of fun with it, so I'm really grateful to see you checking me out. And uh, for those of you who are returning, wow, we're going to have a very eventful evening this evening. The energy is starting to come back. Don't you feel it? Um, that's because our three eclipses that were in June and the beginning of July, the last one was last uh, Sunday, they are finally done. Yay, hooray. <laughs> okay. Those eclipses tend to really bleed the planet of energy. We get so low and down. This one's taken a little while to come back from, but uh, never fear. I can feel that energy coming up. I know you can too. Um, my husband is bouncing off the walls. So if you're anything like him, your energy is already back and hopping, which is great. Okay. Let me go over a few of our, uh, I like to call this housekeeping announcements as we get started. Um, and then we're gonna jump right in. We're gonna have a wonderful psychic hour this evening. I will explain also how it works so that you folks who are new aren't gonna be left hanging out wondering how to, how to do this and how to go about getting your reading. Okay, first off, um, I want to remind you immediately, if you could come you know, take a look at the lower right-hand corner of my screen, uh, please make a note that the next Psychic Hour, August Psychic Hour for 2020, is early in August. It's on August 2nd. So please don't wait around for my newsletter or for my announcements. Just write it in your calendar. Sign up for it now um, so that you'll remember to come back on August 8th and join in for all the fun. I also want to remind any of you here who are members of my membership program, the VIPs, I call you folks, uh, your next Q&A, looking at the lower left-hand corner here, is this month. It's in July, a little bit later. It's on July 23rd. And come with lots and lots of Q&A, lots of questions, and I will be answering them. Uh, for those of you who are uh, regulars or even just newbies for the uh, you know, the psychic hour, let me just give you a quick overview without spending too much time on it of what my VIP membership is all about. Um, I have been, oh God, since 1979, I taught my very first uh, in-person class in my little tiny apartment in Bayshore, New York. So that, that gives you an idea not only of how old I really am, but also <laughs> how long I've been teaching. And that class, incidentally, was a tarot class. Uh, so the very first class I ever taught was a tarot class, and that branched off into everything else that I teach. And for years and years and years and years, um, I was teaching in first the basement in my home, then in New Age bookstores, then in my own store, then in my own office, and now mostly online. Um, all that time, I was making audio recordings of all of the classes that I taught. Um, my guide said this knowledge is important. When I teach, I channel. Um, a lot of the information I teach in my classes is researched. I'm a, I'm a researcher. Um, so a lot of it is interpretations of other people, and I always give credit when I'm doing that. Most of what I teach is channeled. It comes from my guides. So the information that's in those classes uh, that I put on audio tape for all those years is in it, it's just amazing and it is not something wrong to find any place else except in my VIP area. For years I was wondering what to do with all those classes and uh, then when this marvelous technology we have in today's world came about I was able to put all those classes from cassette tape onto uh, your mp3 recordings which is what you'll find in the vip area and i was able to put them into our vip section and put them under different headings and together there's well over 100 different recordings and they constitute really a, almost a college degree in metaphysics it's pretty pretty intense um and that membership program right now um i don't think i have it as a separate ad here but i want to make a point um where it says VIPs, be sure to get your discount on the VIP page. That's not just for VIPs, folks. 
if you are attracted to learning in the metaphysical field, and if you're someone who learns mostly um, by hearing through audio, then my VIP membership program is really ideally suited to you. If you're a person who is from another part of the world and you find it awkward to take classes, uh, even online in person, or even this class, which I make later to accommodate more people, that's why we're 9 p.m. Eastern time, um, the thing is, is that people who are in England or, or Belgium, France, or on the other side of the world, and uh, Australia, China, have difficulty being able to take classes online uh, with people here in the United States because of the time differences. So audio uh, classes that are in your own library that you can listen to on any device are really, really valuable in today's world. And as long as they don't involve meditation, and some of them do, so you've got to be careful, as long as they don't involve meditation, you can actually listen to those classes when you're making that long commute to work. So they're, they're really great classes. So you're going to find all those classes in my VIP area. That, that's how it was formed around those classes. And then I meet with the VIPs once a month to go on, you know, and answer all the questions that people who are studying classes might have. Uh, we, we meet for an hour a month. And then, of course, during the year, as my existing VIPs know, you get lots and lots of uh, you know, discounts or you get a, a free webinar that comes up. So there are little add-ons that happen all year long. Um, and, of course, right now you're probably thinking, well, that membership program that Sandy offers is really uh, incredibly expensive. And, frankly, um, it should be, okay, but I want people to learn. That's what I'm all about. So it's not expensive. Um, its normal price is $20 a month or $197 a year. And at that, I think it's a steal. But right now, because of the lockdown and so many people having financial difficulties all over the planet, I've discounted it. So right now, you can sign up for only $10 a month, or if you pay for the whole year in advance, it's even cheaper. It's $97 for the year. And that price is grandfathered in. So you will only pay that forever as long as you continue your membership. Now, if you're an existing VIP member and you're listening to this and you're still at the $20 uh, and, you know, a month price or the $197 a month price, please go and cancel that membership and then rejoin at the new price. And you'll find that right down at the bottom of the uh, welcome page for the, for the VIP section. Um, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to continue this. Uh, it's, it's a really fabulous deal, and I think this information is so important. Um, folks, if you want to know more about it, then get on my Facebook and, and ask Casey, any of Sandy's VIP people, what do you think of her program? And I'm sure you'll get dozens of answers from people who will tell you what to think of my program, which uh, is usually pretty, pretty positive feedback. Okay, enough on that. Um, I just also want to point out I am scheduling my cruise. I know the rest of the world thinks cruise ships are never going to sail again, but I'm a psychic. <laughs> and I know that next year's cruise is going to go off, okay? And by then, folks, we are all going to need a cruise. <laughs> so if you're a cruiser like I am, um, I'm going to advise that you jump on this early. Uh, it's going to be from April 10th to 15th. Um, you to get the best price and ensure that this is the big thing to ensure your you get your private uh, or your place in my private group you need to book through our travel agent Pat Frank who incidentally is also one of my psychic development teachers so she's a psychic and uh, you can get her phone number by connecting with Lisa my assistant you can email her um, her phone number is uh, not her phone number but her uh, her email address is Lisa, S-A, Inc., at AOL.com. It's also on my website. But email her, and she'll give you Pat's phone number so you can get right in touch with Frank and register. The reason I'm saying get on this right now is that, guess what, folks? Because cruise ships aren't sailing right now, the whole industry is hurting. And I know this really is mean to say, but that becomes your advantage. So you're going to be able to pick up some of the very best prices that you've ever seen on cruises right now. And yes, you can apply that price to the cruise you're taking with me. So if you think you want to do this, even, even if you think you might, but you're not sure, please get yourself registered. You can always make a deposit and then renege on it and get the deposit back. 
But if you don't do it at all, you might miss out on getting your best price. So if you're on the fence about it, then just do it. Okay, we have so much fun on that. And if you want to know more about it, just, again, go to my Facebook page and say, hey, folks, what do you think of Sandy's Cruise? Have you done it? And I think you're going to get lots of people who give some interesting comments about that. We have fun. And incidentally, next year's cruise is going to be the identical itinerary to what it should have been this year when we didn't have a chance to go. And the thing that is going to highlight that itinerary is we are going to visit the Rose House in Jamaica, which is a haunted house on a very large plantation, a world-renowned haunted house with the real thing. And we're going to we're going to go and we're going to evaluate it. We're going to have some fun. So um, not only do we get a great cruise and you get to hang out with psychics, but you get to go visit a haunted house with us. <laughs> so it's really going to be something special. Okay. Uh, just a reminder, I now have an app. Okay. This means that everything that you can see on my website, you can now see very readily on my app. So please go to this, uh, you know, particular uh, email address or, or web address and download it so that you have it on your smart device. No, we do not track you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you'll be able to track us. And I think that's more important. Um, last thing I want to make mention of my Kabbalah pathworking class. I'm so excited about it, folks. It just started last Wednesday. Again, this is one of those, if you're sitting on the fence things, if right now you feel like you need a shot in the arm, if you feel like you're a little lost, if you feel like so many of us that, okay, Sandy, well, you know, we, we know from your writings about the eclipses, we're getting an instant reset, but I don't know if I want what I wanted last January. So what's next? If you're, if you're that situation, you know, like so many of us are, where you're a little confused, you're tired, you're frustrated, you're not sure where the world is going, you know where you're going maybe, hopefully, um, but you have people around you that, are rocking your boat, making it difficult for you because of their concern, their fears. I, I could go on and on and on. The reason I'm talking about this is that Kabbalah pathworking will help you with all of those things. It is probably the most personally uh, directive, inner influencing, motivational class that I, I teach. Um, what's interesting is you don't even have to be awake for the class. You can sit and sleep through the whole thing and it seems to benefit you anyway. Um, people who have gone through divorces, major losses, moves, transitions of all kinds, lost their businesses, have taken that class in the middle of going through all those things and managed to go through them with an even temper, making the right decisions, transforming and transfiguring their entire life into something far better than it was before, and come out the other end and said, wow, I don't even know how I managed to do all that wonderful stuff. Because you see, the Kabbalah path working, it helps you to reach the highest point in your own potential evolution. So I'm not here to sell it. I just want you to know that if you're sitting on the fence about it or if you need that kind of thing in your life right now, it's not too late to join. I just started last Wednesday. We meet again this coming Wednesday. We just today actually did our very first path on the tree not too late to join. So if it's something that interests you, you can catch up very easily at this point. So I'm going to encourage you, if, if you're interested, if that's your thing, uh, check it out. It's online. You can register on my website. Of course, that's www.sandyanastasi.com. Okay, I am done with all of my housekeeping. So how does this psychic hour proceed? Okay. Well, Lisa, who is in the chat room with you, will be available to first answer all of your questions that she can answer. So feel free to put them into the chat room and she'll answer whatever she can. But if she sees a lot of people putting the same kind of question into the chat room, she's going to read that question out for me. And I'm going to be able to answer either that one question that seems to encompass everybody else's or several of them. So if you're shy and you don't want to talk, Feel, feel free to put your question into the chat room and she'll answer that or I will, okay? Now, we also have the ability for you to raise your hand. If you look at your, uh, your screen, I don't know if on your screen it goes on the side or the bottom, but you'll see a little hand. When you click on that, I see that hand goes up and so does Lisa. And Lisa is the one you have to impress because she's the one who's going to call on you. 
okay? Usually she calls on people who've never been here before to give them a chance to see what it's like, um, or people who haven't had a chance to talk and ask questions in quite some time. But nevertheless, even if you had your question answered last time, if you have a question, raise your hand. You just might get called on. When you are called on, you're going to be able to unmute yourself and you get to ask me a question. But here's what I want first. I'd like to know your first name only because this is going to be public. I put it on YouTube public so you don't want the whole world knowing who you are and, and your personal questions. So just your first name. I would like to know where you're calling from. And that would be the town in the country, if, if you're out of the United States, if you're in the United States, just the town or the state is, is enough. I also would like to know your sun sign. And that's because, you see, my guides are astrologers. And you see an astrology chart here, right in front of you on the screen. My guides will be using that astrology chart. It's called a horary chart. It's a throwaway chart. It's only for those people who are here tonight listening to this program. OK, and you are here in this chart for me to find. So if you tell me what your sun sign is, I'm going to be able to give you a very good rundown on what's going on in your life right now. OK, and not only that, but that uh, will affect all the other people who are the same sign as you who are on the call, too. So it's, it's kind of a fun thing to do. And then after you've given me your sun sign, of course, uh, I want to know what you're most grateful for. What is the thing? In, in fact, tell me that first, your, your name, where you're calling from, what you're most grateful for, then your sun sign. And then the fifth piece of information is what is your specific personal question, which maybe I've already answered by then, but just in case I haven't. <laughs> OK, I think we've got it. Um, one last thing I want to announce. I always do this because uh, I try to move as fast as I can, but my guides will dictate what comes through. And they usually are answering questions from many, many people who are on the call, not just for the person who asks. So even though you might not have asked the question, folks, please listen, because I'm going to be answering your questions along the way. That's how my guides work to try to answer everybody's question who's here. And in case I didn't get a chance to ask that question directly or answer it for you, um, you have the opportunity to email me. You can either email Lisa at her email address or me at the address that's right here on GoToMeeting. I'll get it. And ask your one simple question anytime between 9 p.m. tonight, which is right now, or and rather 9 p.m. tomorrow night. After 9 p.m. tomorrow night, I cut that off. And you must be here physically. If you don't stay till the end of the call, well, it, I'm not going to I'm not going to answer that question. But if you're here till the end of the call and you did not get called on, I didn't get a chance to answer your question. You have until nine o'clock tomorrow night to email me your simple direct question. OK. OK. Lisa, who is our first victim this evening? We have so many tonight. Yeah. <laughs> the first hand I saw go up tonight is Josh. And Josh, it says you're self-muted. Oh, there you go. Hello. You've got to unmute for me to, to talk to you. I hear Hello. you. Hello. I hear you. How are you? I'm good, Josh. How are you? I'm good. This is my first time being in here, so kind of a little nervous. Oh, nothing to be nervous about. We are we all are friends. This is this is a really interesting community of very weird and wonderful people. So welcome. Um, my question to you is to be on track here is where are you calling from? Um, Georgia and the United States. OK, so you're, you're just a little bit north of us. I'm down here in Florida. And what are you most grateful for in your life tonight? Um, my relationships, um, family, and um, just many, many things. Is I, I could go on and on. That's a good place to be, Josh. I'm grateful for you that you uh, you're recognizing that. You know, so many times we are surrounded by things that are great for us and wonderful for us, and we're so busy running the rat race that we forget to notice what what joy. Is around us so thanks for sharing that and Josh, oh yeah and i'm a virgo 
No, you're and you're a Virgo. You now see so you're also psychic. I was about to ask that you took that right yes. from my mouth. Okay, now follow me because you're about to get a little astrology lesson. Okay, right over here you'll see this is Virgo. That's the glyph for Virgo. That's what we call that little M. I think of it as the M with its legs crossed. That's the glyph for Virgo, the symbol for it. Well, ten degrees of Virgo is in this house of relationship. That's the seventh house, and the whole rest of Virgo is in the eighth house. That's the money house. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. I'm like, where's my money going to come from? And who's giving me money? And who's sharing the ideas and the thoughts and the things that I'm I'm producing? And i.e. So you're really on, really on, folks. If you are a Virgo, okay, or if you're its opposite sign, Pisces. Or if you're in either a Sagittarius or a Gemini, which are the two signs that are at 90 degrees from Virgo. Okay. If you're one of those signs, we call those the mutable signs. It's the mutable cross in astrology. Guess what? Relationships and money, mostly money, are the things that are on your mind right now. <laughs> okay. And that's fairly okay. a bad thing. Okay. Now, let's take a deeper look at this. Okay. Um, if you're a Virgo, and, you know, Josh, you're kind of on the receiving end. Could, could you um, mute in between? Because somebody else is talking in the background. We're getting it. Uh, so mute yourself until I say, what do you think? Okay. That way we're not going to have, I'm not going to have to feel like I'm competing with uh, the TV or whatever is on. Okay. So over here in the second house, which is the other money house, there's two money houses in the chart. And you have Neptune and Pisces. That's opposing your sun right now. Well, that Neptune in the house of money says that you're a little confused on perhaps where the money is going to come from or how it's going to get handled. Or perhaps in your relationship, you've got a partner or, or a spouse that's handling money one way, you're handling it another way. I.e., there's a little bit uh, of a feeling of I'm not quite sure what's going on with the money happening here. Now, we also have the south node and the eclipse that just happened right over here in the house of friends and we have the north node over here in the house of kids and that forms if you bear with me that forms what we call a t square if you can see my cursor it forms a t so it comes together like this and the open end of the t is virgo and so guess what everybody in your world figures that you're the one who's going to produce the money <laughs> And if you don't produce the money, at least you're the one who's going to make the right decisions, who's going to point the way. So this can get a little bit, it can give you a little bit of a feeling of carrying this heavy burden on your shoulders. Meanwhile, though, there are opportunities opening up all around you. That said, this is because of the nodal axis here that's involved. But that said, you're having a little bit of a difficulty with that because either there are so many opportunities and you're either not free to take them yet to move at this point and that could be because of your relationship or perhaps because of the coronavirus lockdown or it may be just that there are so many that you're not able to really balance what's out there and see well what is going to be the best best move for me now I'm going to open ask you to open your mic again and ask you what is your specific question and also, how did I do on that? Um, you're right on about this. Um, so do I just need to move forward with this? So I didn't just follow my intuition or something just to make these decisions because it's right on. Yeah, it's just coming up. Um, I don't know. It's just hard to make these rational decisions. Right. And you know something? I've got to tell you, you really are psychic because that was the exact advice I'm going to give you. Neptune is a really different, see this guy is Neptune. He's a really hard planet to have in a money house. Um, why? Because it tends to put this cloud around everything you want to know. And that cloud can come across as I've got too much data, so I'm balancing it and I can't figure it out. Or it can come that the one thing that you're waiting for isn't coming. Or it can be that there are two or three things that all look good, but you're not seeing enough of them to know what they are, i.e., when you try to use your brain to work with Neptune, it fouls you up every time, and you end up making the wrong decision. 
So when you said, well, what do I do? Use your intuition. And man, was that your intuition talking. Because the only thing that's really going to help you right now to make the best choices for you and your family financially is when you feel not what you want. That's not the same as intuition. It's that feeling in your gut that says, yes. Okay. When you have that feeling, then that's the direction you need to head. And something very interesting happens. You're, you're, we are all creators of our world. We're all manifestors. And your guides, we all have guides. And your guides are all lined up out there just waiting to help you manifest. But they can't help you until you make it clear what you want. <laughs> okay? So you've got to use your intuition to focus on the direction you're going to go. And then once they know that direction, they're going to go to work. And they're going to start bringing in all the opportunities and all the stepping stones and all the people you need to know. As long as you keep your eyes on that distant goal, you are going to get everything you need to work your way towards it. Um, my, uh, my guides threw this card for you. This first card is an inverted four of wands, which talks about either you're over your head with a house or perhaps um, a, a new relationship has come into your life and there's a difference in what she wants from what you want. Uh, the thing is, is that there's been a change in, in the not too distant past in your life situation and your finances are suffering as a result of it. So you're a little off balance. OK, but when you get back on track with your intuition, you're going to be moving into this card, which is the six of pentacles. And you'll notice this card shows the scales being balanced financially. So I think you're going to find that you can very quickly work out of whatever difficulties you're in financially and you'll find not only the way through them but the way to be successful once you start to recognize that that little intuitive voice is leading you in the right direction you just have to learn to trust it okay how'd that sound right to you thank you so much that was all that was all perfectly just right on wow and i was just what do i need to do to um with my psychic abilities to move do I need to do that in the future and work on that? Well, once again, if you are, this is for everyone who's in the, on that mutable axis, folks. If you're a Virgo, a Pisces, a Sagittarius, or a Gemini, right now is a wonderful, wonderful time for you to be developing your intuitive skills in a way that can help you to make money. So. You may, as you are, Josh, be a little bit of a medium or a clairvoyant. You might find picking up the tarot cards is a very easy thing for you to do, that you can make a little money on the side. The reason I keep saying this, by the way, is because Neptune, the psychic planet, is in the money house in this chart. Okay? So you should definitely be able to utilize those psychic skills, those intuitive skills, in a very direct way to be able to make some money. Now, all of you folks who are mutable signs, me included, you're going to find that that intuition is very important no matter what your field is. So if, for example, you're in sales, learn to develop your intuition so that you know whether that person's worth spending your time on to sell something to or whether they're definitely a closed book. So, you know, you really shouldn't put your time and energy into them, at least as far as selling is concerned. Um, if you're in a counseling field, you're going to be able to use your intuition ability to know if that person needs your help or not. Or maybe it's time to back off and not push so hard on something. So you understand what I'm what I'm talking about here is that every single field in the world is enhanced when you employ your intuition. And whatever it is that you're doing, if you bring your intuition to bear, you're going to be better at your career. And as a result, you're going to make more money. And right now, we all, I think everyone needs to use their intuition to know, do you want to stay in the job you were in before the shutdown happened? Do you want to tweak it? Have you found other ways of bringing money in while we've been going through the shutdown? Have you moved into a parallel profession and you find you like it better? This is really interesting because we've had enough time during this last six months to really take a look at our lives and at our finances and also at our actual needs. A lot of us are now spending money on different, totally different things than what we used to spend money on. 
We're living our lives differently from the way we used to live our lives. And we really need to get in touch with that part of ourselves going forward so that we make sure that we step forward into what's going to bring us happiness. That's the most important thing, feeling fulfilled and happy in whatever it is that you're going to be doing. So, Josh, I'm going to have to move on, but I think that helped a lot. Yes? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And Lisa, who's our next person? All righty. We, we have so many in the room tonight, I'm having a hard time seeing all the names. So <laughs> I apologize for the delay. I have to scroll. And let me also apologize because I'm about to try to pronounce a name I don't know. <laughs> so Avanti. I hope I got that close. That's a beautiful name. It's Will you unmute, please. Uh, nice to meet you, Sandy. My name is Avanti. I'm from Saratoga in California. My son, son is Scorpio. I'm very grateful for many things in my life. I'm very grateful that I have more blessings than uh, challenges. Uh, uh, and uh, my question is, uh, I'm worried about my younger son, uh, and I want to know when he's going to be healthy and happy and successful. Okay, we've got a whole big mouthful of things here, but you're going to get an astrology lesson too, Avante, and that's good because you have this. Did you know you have an odontic mem memory? No, I did not know that. Um, how about the fact that you remember a conversation that your mother had with your kindergarten teacher? <laughs> okay, <laughs> that, that's good. Odontic memory. You just remember everything. Um, of course, you only remember the things that you felt were important to you. You know, it's not like total everything, but. Um, you, your poor kid, you remember everything. <laughs> okay, let's look at your younger son. And this is going to be good because you're going to remember this information I'm going to give you, and this will help. Um, even though he's not here tonight, because it's your question about him, he's going to show up in this chart too. And this is you, this is Scorpio up on the midheaven in this chart. So personally, you should be interested in your career right now. If you're a uh -huh. Scorpio, folks, and you're on the call tonight, uh, a career and career directions are really, and, and life direction, I'm going to expand it, life direction is a really, really major factor for you right now. Um, but let's take a look at Avante's son. Um, we're going to find your youngest son. Watch this. The first son, the oldest son, is one, two, three, four, five. That's just the oldest kid, okay, right here. He's in the second house in this chart, fifth house from the son is the oldest child um just a comment uh your your oldest one uh looks like he's a little bit confused too is he also a boy he's also a boy yes yeah and he's a little uh, he he by the way looks like and i'm not going to go into the depths of this but it looks like he's had some really major personal problems in the past but he's in the process of healing them okay, okay. Do you only okay. Have, yeah do you only have the two children yes please okay so his brother is third house from him so it's one, two, three. So here's your youngest child. Mm -hmm. Do you know that he is a whole lot like you? Okay. Are you just processing them or did you really? Are you, are you asking me or are you telling me? Yeah, he's a, he's a lot like you personality wise. He is also, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a, also a little bulldog. Um, he, never, he never gives up. He gets his teeth into something and he's still going to be chewing it on in 10 years from now. Like I said, he's a lot like his mom. Um, uh -huh. I think that he has been a little bit eclipsed by his brother, um, right. you know, and maybe that's got a lot to do with what's going on right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the being eclipsed by his brother may have, and how old is he? Because it may have gotten him into copying. He's yeah, he's 24 right now. And my older one has turned 29 just today. Yeah. The, the, I have to tell you, I think the older one is, you know, your older one is the problem child, not the younger one. <laughs> okay. okay. The biggest problem with the younger one is that, you know, if you live in the, if you live in the shadow of your older brother, there is this tendency to unconsciously copy him and move in the same path that he has been. Um, one of the things you should be talking to your younger son about is that you really love him the way he is and you do not need him to copy his brother because he's perfect just as he is. Otherwise, mm -hmm. he's going to keep wanting to copy his brother's pattern. And his brother's pattern is not going to be an easy one, and it doesn't need to be his, okay? Um, now, his ruling planet is Venus. It's over here. 
um, and I, I don't know if he's got health issues or what it sounded when you talked, when you asked the question that there were health issues. This doesn't look like health issues. This looks like he's got a relationship going on. He's really got to think seriously about. It. So can you tell me what his specific problem is? Yeah, his problem is addiction. <laughs> okay, well, guess what? Um, you're going to hate me for this. He's following his older brother because the older brother is the one with the addictive problem. He's oh, got yes. Okay. You're right. Yes. You know, be, be aware. He's got to under, you know, it, it may be that you're merely giving him all the love and attention he needs for himself, not for the addiction. But, you know, he's incredibly creative and artistic and talented. And, you know, he's a very unique person. He's very soft and gentle. He's not like your older son in so many ways. He's really himself. And when you really focus on him, and let him know that you know him. It's not that he's been overlooked. You really know him. And you love these things about him that are so unique and special to him. It may be that he can just step out of that addiction pattern into who he really is. Because mm -hmm. it's not his pattern. He's copying his brother. And okay, then, that's not Yeah, and, and the problem with, with addiction, uh, and tell him the psychic said this, okay? Um, okay. You know, this little planet over here, Neptune, is responsible for addiction. It's also responsible for psychic ability in, in its extreme, full-blown uh, way that it can appear. And so you would think that as a psychic, I'm like, heck, yeah, let's go do drugs. Absolutely the opposite. I do not do drugs, and I drink very, very, very little. Yes, Lisa, you know, somebody else can be finished with a half a bottle of wine, and I'm still sipping my half a bottle of wine and getting or half, half a glass of wine and getting high on it. Okay, so mm -hmm. the thing about alcohol, and I hope I'm not sipping on anybody's toes, but this may be helpful. Um, alcohol addiction. My whole family is psychic. Okay, yours is too, incidentally. And mm -hmm. when people aren't expressing their psychic senses, when they're not believing in them, or when they're so extremely susceptible to what's going on in the world around them, they don't know how to keep it out, they mm -hmm. won't turn to addictive substances to keep it out or to hide from it, to shut it down, okay? So I, like you, come from a family that's filled with addiction. So I've studied it. I know a lot about addiction. And uh -huh. I can tell you that alcohol addiction is actually the worst of all addictions because every single cell in your body becomes individually addicted to the substance. So uh -huh. you could be dry if you're an alcoholic for 50 years, and one day one gram of alcohol manages to get through your mouthwash, and you can't, you, you, you can't resist, you can't believe how badly you want to drink. The thing is, this is why they say that an alcoholic has to fight the addiction every day, and that's true. Other addictions, it really does finally get out of the cellular strata, but it can take years to do it. So addictive physical substance addictions are really, really bad. And with your younger son, he needs to understand this, because if he is copying his brother up to a point, it's merely copycatting. But once he addicts his physical body to the substance, now is his, and he's got to kick it. And there's another level of addiction, which I have rarely talked about. I'm going to be writing a book on this one day. I've seen it. Some of you who are clairvoyant have seen it. There are little, well, not so little. There are big, giant, black, gobular entities on the other side that feed on human drama. And the more they can get a person in a family addicted, and it's always a person who is bright and beautiful and has tremendous potential and lots of friends, and that one addict can pull everybody else down with them through drama, and the, the succubus, the, the big black thing on the other side, that's how I see it, it's like a giant black tick, just gets fatter because it feeds off the emotion of everybody else, okay? So, uh, you know, I don't see addiction quite the way the average person sees addiction. I think addiction is one of the big things wrong with our society right now, and it truly needs to be um, needs to be done away with. So maybe you can get your younger son to see his vendetta as mm -hmm. fighting addiction, because he loves to fight. He's gentle and he's sweet, but boy, does he love to take a side and, and really support it and say, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to change this. 
So I should focus on my older son giving it up so it helps my younger son. Well, give your older son the help, what he needs. He's, he's in the right position right now to, to, to heal. Give your older son the help, but guess what? I'm going to suggest that you're not the one who should give him the help. He, he needs counseling. He needs a good counselor. Your younger son is where you should be giving your attention, but give it to him not for his addiction. Give him the attention for his artwork, for what he's studying, for what he's achieving, for i.e. give him the attention, not his addiction. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. And come back and let us know how they do. Okay. I definitely do come back. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Very grateful to you. Thank you. And Lisa, who's our next person? Our next person is going to be Don R. Uh, Don, can you unmute yourself? Hello. There you go. Hello. Hello, Don. How are you? Hi, I'm great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Um, I am from Pensacola, and I'm grateful for my family, which includes my animals and all the animals that I get to see um, and be around. Um, I'm a Scorpio, and my question would be, do you see us moving or selling our home and moving possibly out of the country, and when, if, if, that, if at all? Um, I think about that almost every day, and if, if you don't see that, maybe what my focus should be. Maybe I have the wrong focus. Well, uh, I think you have the right focus. I definitely see it. Uh, okay. Let me show you where it's coming from. Here you are. And by the way, all of you Scorpios, pay attention. And if you're a Taurus, if you're a, uh, <laughs> I, my brain just went dead. Okay. If you're a Taurus, a Leo, or an Aquarius, also pay attention because all of you are being uprooted from wherever your path was. Okay. And the planet that's doing that uprooting is none other than this little guy. His name is Uranus. Okay. Um, Uranus transits are very interesting. They always bring opportunity with them. And they are very long transits. A Uranus transit, Uranus will move into a sign and then spend seven years in that sign before it leaves. And it's one of the most interesting seven years you will have ever spent. Now, since you guys are dealing with the early part of Uranus, it's really only been in your sun sign now for, or affecting your sun sign for about a year and a half. It brings opportunity, it brings change, it brings revolution. Notice how your world has sort of like toppled in every which different direction, hasn't it? Don't yes. assume that because you have made a change, it's the last one, because you're going to have seven years worth of changes. And so I know that if you want to you choose to move out of the country, you will. And based on this chart, um, you have a little education to do first. I don't know what that's in reference, to, but the house Uranus is in is an education house. It might be, for example, if you want to move to that country you want, that you need to go and learn the language first. Okay? Maybe learn a little bit about the social system. Um, but this looks to me like within the next year to year and a half, you will actually be moving because of Uranus's proximity to the fourth house cusp. It's at 10 degrees, the fourth house cusp is six degrees later, 16 degrees. So within the next year to year and a half, you should be making that move. Now remember, it could be one major move to that country, or it could be two or three little moves before you get to that country. And what I usually tell people when you're making that, those changes with Uranus involved, each change you make, Think of it as money in the bank. Think of it as an investment. So, for example, somebody else who, who maybe uh, isn't thinking of a move might be thinking of expanding their house. I would suggest you only expand the house if the neighborhood allows for it, because you're probably going to be moving out of that house three or four years from now, and you're going to want to be able to get your money back out. Supposing you are a, a Scorpio, and you're really thinking about what you are, where I want to move in the world, what I want to do with my life, because you see, you're not just thinking of your home, you're thinking of your career and your whole lifestyle. The same thing with the ground we were just speaking with, what I really want to change in my life going forward and realize that going forward is going to probably be 
a series of small shifts, but they're going to be major shifts. If I were to talk to any one of you fixed sign people, the Scorpios, the Tauruses, the Aquarians, and the Leos, five years from now, you're going to be living a very different life than the life you're living right now. And I know some of you, you're fixed signs, so you don't like change. And so you really don't want to believe me. But five years from now, you can come back on the psychic hour where you can say, you know, Sandy, <laughs> and I will be all ears. Okay. I hope that helps. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. You're very welcome. And Lisa, who's next? All righty. This next one, again, another difficult name for Lisa. <laughs> I've already explained this to them in the chat room so they know. So I'm just going to say this name starts with A-B-H. You know who you are. And you need to unmute yourself. There you go. Hi, Sandy. Uh, my name is Abhishek. I'm originally from Mumbai, India, but currently I'm in Tampa, Florida. My sun sign is Capricorn. The thing I'm most grateful for is my family, to be specific, my mother, who loves me unconditionally. My question is, um, I'm, I'm thinking of opening or starting a business or a company. What area or uh, what, what I'm actually looking for an idea. I haven't thought of anything. So what area should I be opening it in? And when should I be actually starting that business or start that open a company or start? Okay. Thank you. The first thing that I want to talk about is uh, Avia. And thank you. That's a beautiful name. I love it. Um, thank you. Now, although, although I think you always have to tell people in America how to pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Avia, you fall in this chart into the 12th house, Capricorn. This is where Capricorn falls. And that's a very interesting place for Capricorn because Capricorn is not real comfortable in that 12th house. So it's interesting that, uh, remember, this is, this is a throwaway chart. It's only good for tonight. So it's talking about where you're at in your life right now. And what this says is that you're really being very introspective. And Capricorn is a builder, you see. So Capricorn's always outer directed building or creating or trying to fix somebody else or hold them up. But Capricorn's life is usually outer directed. And so we find you Capricorns tonight really doing a lot of introspection, a lot of soul searching, um, checking out where you're at in life and saying, is this truly where I really want to be? Um, you probably, since Ju this is Jupiter and this is Pluto in this house, and Jupiter talks about having moved long distances and dealing with other cultures. That's pretty obvious with you. But other Capricorns here have those same kinds of things. Major life changes have happened for you, Jupiter and Pluto, at the same degree. One's 22 and change, and the other is 23, basically the same degree. So you have been through this major enlightenment opening wow factor, but it's not come easily. It has come at great loss. There's been a lot of risks you've taken that haven't worked out that have made you say, whoops, tighten the belt. There have been, there's been a total change internally of who you are. Um, you know, you're a little bit of a natural entre entrepreneur. You're used to, you set your feet in a certain direction and bam, it happens. And now you're looking at it and saying, it doesn't always work that way. I really have to get in touch with all these things inside to make sure it works that way. Every Capricorn here on the call tonight is feeling those same things. If you're a Capricorn or it's opposing sign Cancer, which is where the sun is right now, so the sun is lighting this up. If you are an Aries, which is the sign that's 90 degrees away, or if you're a Libra, you are feeling a little bit of what, can I call you Avi? That's what wants to come out. Who calls you Avi? Yes, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Who calls you Avi? Sorry, sorry, what? Who calls you Avi? Uh, every uh, my previous teammates uh, uh, called me Abhi. They, usually, American usually uh, American uh, yeah. people call me Abhi. Right. Because they find it difficult to call the entire name. Yeah, this is somebody who's dead. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know that. That's your guide. Okay, I just heard that your guide calls you Abhi. Okay, so oh. somebody I would assume from India that called you that when you were a little kid. Okay, anyway, that tells you who your guide is. That's why I was asking who called you Avi or called you Avi. Um, uh, so guess what? Um, right now, there you, what you're wanting to do, you really do have to get in touch deep down inside. 
um, what is your heart's desire? One of the reasons the things that you have been doing have not come to fruition is they have been what other people desired for you. They haven't been what you desired for yourself. And they're also telling me that even though you are the person who really feels the most comfortable um, kind of being on your own and being in control of your own little space, right now what's going to bring you the most success is partnering with someone. Now, whether that's in a financial sense or whether that's in a just, you know, you help them and they help you because you're both on the same path, I'm not sure. But I do know that there's a need for that partner or support system in what you do. I also want to tell you that you have very deep insight. This is the psychological house. I don't know what your background is, but you've got a very deep insight into other people. You're a natural born psychologist, okay? So whatever your, your field is, whatever your background is, your knowledge, your insight, your understanding of people can be brought to bear to, to make you more successful. You have something you bring with you from other lifetimes, which is a very powerful uh, feeling that you must succeed. It's almost like you're driven to success. Um, that has actually gotten in your way because it's forced you to take some shortcuts that have you know, robbed what you were doing, okay? Now you can step back and recognize, no, next thing I do, I want to be all in on. I don't want to take the shortcuts. I want a really good, solid foundation. I want it to be successful. I want it to be something I can partner with, with my, I don't know if it's a spouse or a good friend. I want success in this. Now, when you say, what are the things that you could do? Anything which comes from family, from counseling, from being, you, see, you tend to see the big picture, and when people bring you their issues, you can tell them what is going on. Now, I don't know if that's in the construction field, if that's in the psychology field, if that's in the educational field. The ability to do that is your skill. Uh, call it troubleshooting, if you And my guide is saying that the field that you go into is something that you have done before. And you didn't make a whole lot of money at it, but you were very good at it. You were respected at it. Most importantly of all, you enjoyed it. And if you bring to it what you now know, you can accomplish so much more with it. So stepping back into something you're familiar with and comfortable with is your answer, your direct answer. But bring all those other things I talked about in, and you'll make more money and you'll be more successful with it. I hope that helps. Uh, got it. And uh, when you said that I uh, have that ability to uh, read people or just to understand their problems and provide some solutions, yes. uh, you were damn accurate on it because I, I, I feel that I have that ability that whenever someone comes in, any problem, I just give them steps on uh, solving that problem and they are instantly, literally amazed by all those things that I speak. But I am not in uh, the... Uh, that feel unfortunately but uh, mm -hmm. yes I try to just help people by doing that if anyone get a chance you can bring that to bear in whatever field you're in that's why my guides didn't they said this is your gift but you can you can apply it in any field that you're in so even mm -hmm. if you're a bricklayer and you're laying bricks in somebody's house if that person wants a fireplace put in that corner and the structure won't accommodate it you are the person who can find the solution for them still getting the fireplace. It's, it's really interesting. Your skill, your ability is something that can translate to a personal problem. It can translate to a physical solution. It's not, it's, your skill is problem solving. It's not necessarily, uh, the arena is very large in which you can use it. So you're a problem solver. So what did you used to do? What was a former employment that you had that you could bring your problem solving skill to and probably build on that and make more money and be more successful with it. Um, I, I enjoyed doing sports. I was really good at it, but that was not my employment. Um, so right now I'm in the tech sector. Uh, so I'm trying to, recently I underwent a major change uh, uh, this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I had, had kind of a change of career within the within the technical field, but a change of career. And right now, I've chosen a field. I mean, I had uh, got some losses because of that, 
But mm-hmm. right now, I've gotten a chance to, as you said, build my foundations. And I'm thinking this would help me in the long term. Well, giving this some thought, supposing you went back into the sports area, mm-hmm. not full time, you stay, you stay with your tech job because that's going to pay the bills, but mm-hmm. start to you know, use your tech skills to market yourself as mm-hmm. a problem solver for athletes. Hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. I mean, uh, eventually, like if I had some constraints, but if I remove those constraints, I would be really happy to go in the sports sector as a coach, because right now um, I cannot be an athlete. So I would be really happy to go as a as a coach or some or a management. Right. Uh, managerial yeah. position. I've got, to, I've got to tell you, I'll be the highest paid salary in the world right now is life coaching. That's oh. the highest paid salary in the world. And if you are a life coach that specializes in problem solving for sports, for athletes, and you really have what it takes to solve those problems, you're going to be in that echelon because athletes are paid really big money and they can afford really good coaches. So I think you've answered your question, but you've got to, in order to make that top dollar, in order to be as good at it as you can be, you have to make sure that you've done, you know, you've done your homework to pull together everything you need. And you certainly have the technical skills to develop the web presence to be able to do that. Makes sense. Yeah. Yep. So there's your answer. Mm-hmm. Let uh, me know. Thank you. No, let me yep. know. Keep in touch. Let me know how you make out. And I wish you much. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Thank you. And Lisa, I think I have time for one more. All righty, let me go back down here to Janelle. Janelle, can you unmute yourself? One more time. There you go. Oh. Hi, Sandy. Thank you for taking my call. You're welcome, Janelle. Um, so I am a, um, I'm from Long Island, New York. I'm a tourist. And I'm grateful for my current health situation because I have had some minor health issues, thank God. And um, I've learned a lot about myself through that. I guess my question today and your point on with the whole change thing, I listened to your 2020 Taurus uh, (laughs) predictions and July's and um, there's so much change happening that I feel a lot of anxiety over it and I'm having a hard time just zoning in um, and sifting through it all. So I just need a little help with the change. Um, the light at the end of the tunnel would be nice to see if you have that. And um, you know, it's, it's right around work, career, health and finances. It always is. <laughs> <Your choice. laughs> right. But, you know, there's lots there isn't a whole lot I can do to help you with the anxiety issue, and I wish there was. Uh, yeah. Uranus, the planet Uranus rules electromagnetic force. It rules our nerves. <laughs> okay. And and here it is in your sun sign. And every time you think you've got a handle on it, you know, an, another loud bell rings, and you find yourself. Um, the the I, I relate to this because even though I'm a Gemini, my son is in a Taurus house, so I'm very Taurian. And uh, I remember way back when, many years ago, when I had my first transit of, Tor- of, of Uranus moving through my sun sign, um, I, I was living in an apartment, and all I was trying to do was find peace. I was trying to write a book. So I was working. So I said, okay, I'm going to get up in the middle of the night and write this book because it's the only time I can find peace. Don't you know my neighbor got up in the middle of the night and moved his furniture around upstairs? You know, that's what it is to have a Uranus train. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) No matter how well you plan, it will be a monkey wrench. So what you're going to learn to do is you're going to learn to over plan time. So I had a good friend. uh, I was a safety engineer back then. And when I would go and invest in and do a, a evaluation of her plant that she worked in, the industrial plant, um, mm-hmm. we'd have a meeting. And if she'd, she'd say to me, how long do you think this is going to take, Sandy? And I'd say, oh, no more than a half an hour. So she'd walk into the meeting and she'd tell the other people, schedule yourself for an hour today. 
And I said to her, why do you always do that? You always double the time. And she said, oh, don't you know it takes you that, that long? Whatever you think, it's always double. I said, oh, you're kidding. So he was a friend who recognized this, but I didn't. Because nothing ever went the way I planned it, you see. So, exactly. So you're, so you're learning flexibility. One thing you can do that's going to help is to double the time it takes to do things. And if you end up with extra time, well, that's time for you. Just look at it that way. Please sure. also do not take time away from yourself. You do have to schedule time for you in the course of your day. And folks, whether you are a Taurus, a Scorpio, an Aquarius, or a Leo, you're still having these same problems that she is. Please remember that. So what I'm saying to her is for you as well. And you have to schedule time for you because the way the world is falling, if you have one tiny five-minute space, that's where that's when somebody who needs you is going to phone call you. So you can't you can't assume that you're going to find time for yourself like you used to. You have right. to plan that time in, and you'll have to turn the phone off, and you're going to have to put the dog out, and you're going to have to tell the husband, don't call me at that time i.e., because otherwise that will be taken from you. So these are little things you can do that are going to help you to deal with the anxiety. If you don't do those things, the next six years are going to be very difficult for you. <laughs> okay? Right. Yeah. The savings grace is really going to be Uranus rules the uh, 11th house in astrology. And so you're going to find yourself rich in your friends. I also want to tell you your friends are one of the things that are going to be shifting and changing. So be flexible, allow, and you will find that the person you need to talk to may not be the one you want, but the one you end up talking to will be the right one. Did that make sense? It makes perfect sense, yes. Okay. So allow yourself flexibility in those friends and groups. Same thing with the groups. An old group that used to be your support system isn't going to work anymore. A new group is going to come in, and then next year that group will change. You're going to have to create flexibility in these things. And that will help you. I love the fact that you've got Sagittarius up here in this house because that's kind of like a little gold lining as, as your sun sign in Taurus is. It says that you're going to land on your feet as long as you don't go down with the ship. Please remember that. Flexibility is your key. This doesn't mean jump with a brass ring that doesn't exist. Make sure it's solid before you go to grab it. But do take the line that's handed to you. Don't say, I have to stay because I'm, I'm the only one who can do this job. I can't leave because you and I both know that's not true. That's the truth, yes. <laughs> okay. So when the opportunity comes, be a big girl and say, well, yeah, this is that opportunity. This is the lifeline. I need to grab that brass ring. And then the brass ring will become gold in your hands. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you so much for, for asking that question, because I think that was extremely important for everybody else on the call tonight. Well, thank you for answering it. Thank you. You're welcome. Folks, I'm out of time. I want to thank you all for coming. And remember, if you stayed here until the end, I want to say, bless you. You are wonderful people. You gave me your time. I gave you mine. And it all is a bundle of fun. Since you're here, if I didn't answer your question, feel free to ask your simple question um, anytime via email before 9 p.m. tomorrow night. Please give me a week or two to answer it. There are a lot of you on the line. I do answer them. It just takes me, you know, in between other things. So it sometimes takes me a while, but I will get back to you. Folks, I love you all. I wish you a wonderful, wonderful rest of July. And I'll see you hopefully back here on August 2nd for our next psychic hour. Good night, all. Bye-bye.